Hey everyone, this is Cody, and today I'll be reviewing the ZWO ASI 2600MC Air. This is an interesting astronomy camera. It's three in one, so you have a main imaging sensor, you have a guide sensor like the ASI 2600MC Duo, but then you also have an ASI Air at the back here for image acquisition and mount control. So, very interesting astronomy camera. Let's take a look at it. The ASI 2600MC Air was initially introduced as an April Fool's joke, but Obviously ZWO wasn't joking because it is here. This is a physical product now that is going to be released. And essentially what it is, is it's basically like an ASI 2600 MC Duo and an ASI Air had a baby. So you get three in one. So you get the awesome Sony IMX 571 sensor. This is APS-C 26 megapixel, just an awesome camera sensor. Uh, for your guide sensor, you have the SE 2210, another excellent sensor. It's the same sensor that is in the ASI 220mm Mini. The ASI 2600MC Air is well packaged from ZWO and comes with everything that you need to get started right away. So if I just open this up here, first things first, pull out this little accessories box. And this is going to have your USB cords as well as your power cables. Because this is a ASI Air that's integrated into the camera, it does come with power cables as well. And then you also get a little uh, piece of Velcro for some cable, cable management. The camera itself is also well padded, comes right out. There it is. And then in the very bottom, you have the antenna for the ASI 2600MC Air. So it's packed well and comes ready to go right out of the box. Now, unfortunately, the ASI 2600 MC Air does not come with a padded storage case. And this is a bummer because I find that this three-in-one design is perfect for portable astrophotography. So whether you're going on vacation or imaging the Milky Way, it's a very portable setup and it should have a soft padded case that's included with it, at least in my opinion. So what I do is I take the 2600 MC Duo out of its case Take the antenna off the 2600 MC Air, drop it into its case, and then I just put the antenna in the back and it's ready to go. So yeah, it is a little bit of a bummer, but I guess sometimes you don't get everything you want with the product, right? One concern for me with the 2600 MC Air when it was first announced was, is the extra heat from the ASI Air going to affect like the dark noise that you see in the images? So to test this, I took some dark frames with my ASI 2600 MC Duo and compared those to the 2600 MC Air, and they basically look the same. So that was a big relief for me. Then I took some light frames, calibrated them, you know, stacked them, did all those things, and they basically look the same as the 2600 MC Duo. So that was a big relief to see that the heat issues were controlled from ZWO, so big plus right there. Looking at the rear plate of the ASI 2600 MC Air, it's a little bit different than your standard ZWO astronomy camera. So you have three inputs or outputs. You can use them for either purpose. The minimum input is 12 volts, three amps, and the maximum input is 12 volts, five amps. Now, if you're going to be powering any sort of dew heaters, I would definitely recommend the five amp input. Next, you have four USB 2 ports, so there are no USB 3 ports on here. Uh, however, you do get to eliminate a couple USB cables. You will not have a USB cable for your, your guide camera, and you won't have one for your main imaging camera. So at most, you should only have three USB connections, one for your autofocuser, one for your filter wheel, and one for your mount. If you're like me and you're not shooting monochrome, you just will have the two. Uh, you have a reset button as well and a USB-C port for transferring your images to your computer. Let's talk about the main imaging sensor in this camera. It includes the Sony IMX 571, which is an APS-C size sensor. I love the APS-C size sensor for astrophotography because you don't have to worry as much about tilt. It's a little bit more forgiving, but you still get a very large field of view. The sensor is 26 megapixels. It's back illuminated and you don't really see any amp glow with this camera. Additionally, when you compare it to the ASI 2600 MC Pro, when you set this to negative 25 gain, you get 73,000 electrons for a full well capacity. That's almost one and a half times higher than that initial camera. Additionally, you have very low read noise in the camera, excellent quantum efficiency, 
And it's a 16-bit camera capable of 14 stops of dynamic range, so you get some really good color gradient transitions in this camera. Uh, in the RAW 8 mode, you also get 15 pr frames per second, whereas with the 2600 MC Pro, you got 12.8. The last thing I'll mention with this main imaging sensor is the pixel size. The pixels in this camera are 3.76 microns. That's a good pixel size for a wide variety of focal lengths. So if you're using a refractor that has a shorter focal length, this camera will do pretty well. Obviously, it won't do as well as a camera that has 2.4 micron pixels or smaller, but it will still do pretty good. If you're using a Newtonian telescope that has like a medium focal length of, you know, 600 to 800 millimeters or so, this camera will be excellent for that. Then if you're using a long focal length telescope like a Ritchie Chrétien or a Cassegrain, you could just bend the camera two by two. So the pixel sizes in this camera are great for a wide variety of focal lengths. The guide sensor is the SC2210. This sensor has a resolution of 1920 by 1080 and the pixel size is four microns. The nice thing about this guider though is it does an excellent job because you just don't have to worry about any of the flexure in a guide scope or any of the complications of using an off-axis guider. So it works out really well. The challenge is you need a 44 millimeter image circle to fully illuminate that guide camera without any vignetting. Now I've had good results on my eight inch Edge HD, which only has a 42 millimeter image circle, uh, but it does cut off the guide camera about halfway. So to really utilize the camera effectively, you really want that 44 millimeter image circle. And to do that, ZWO includes 54 millimeter threads. And so this is a 54 millimeter threaded camera. Now, one thing that's interesting about the ASI 2600 Duo series or this camera is sometimes people don't realize that the guide sensor has its own focuser here on the top. So sometimes when you get that perfect focus on the main imaging sensor, the guide stars will slightly be out of focus still. And you're like, why is that? Well, you can actually tune in the guide sensor's focus with this little knob on the top and get those guide stars nice and sharp for the best guiding possible. The camera also has a tilt plate. So if you're noticing any tilt issues at the corners of your images, you can go ahead and adjust the tilt screws and fix that issue. One question that will always arise when using a camera with a built-in guide sensor is can you use narrowband filters? Now I've found that the guide sensor is sensitive enough to still pick up stars when using narrowband filters and I haven't seen any issues in my guiding performance whatsoever. So I think you should be just fine using narrowband filters with the 2600 MC Air. All right, that's enough talking about the specs. Let's take a look at some of the images I've produced with the ASI 2600 MC Air. ASI Air portion of the camera mimics the ASI Air Plus, which is, well, a big plus. Haha, <laughs> hilarious, I know. But really, the connectivity of the camera is excellent. I don't get any dropped Wi-Fi connections with the antenna, and it also has the EMMC storage, so when you connect it to a computer, you get vast transferring of your files. Another huge plus with this camera is you get 256 gigabytes of storage capacity. So, you know, if you're busy in the morning, you don't have to immediately transfer your files over and then clear them out for your next night of imaging. You can let those files sit in there for a bit because of that extra storage capacity. So you're really getting the best of the ASI Air in this camera. This would probably be the right camera for you if you're looking for something extremely portable or you want something that will do everything in one. So you have the main imaging sensor, the guide sensor, as well as image acquisition and mount control all in one unit. To make things even better, you get this awesome APS-C size sensor, 26 megapixels, as well as 256 gigabytes of storage capacity, which will make your life a lot easier if you're traveling or on the go.
All right, everyone. Well, that wraps up my review of the ZWO ASI 2600MC Air. This is a very interesting camera as it's three in one, but it's quite effective, especially if you're looking to travel a lot. This has everything you need in one package, so you don't have to bring a guide scope, a guide camera, image acquisition box, or anything like that. This has everything you need all in one. That said, I hope you enjoyed the review. As always, thanks so much for watching and clear skies. Unlike me where it's very cloudy and it's a Bortle 1 sky, so I'm really sad about that, but hopefully it clears up. <laughs> See you later.